Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And this video is a continuation of the rebuilding of the second box motor truck. Uh, if you haven't seen the first half, make sure you check that out to see how and why we ended up here. It was a little bit longer route than what we wanted to take. But uh, in any case, uh, in the long run, this is the better way to go. So we have got the frame basically back to more or less where we started um, so the wheels have been replaced we've got a new frame on top here that the uh, center post and spring assembly sits on I've got that all attached back down I uh, welded these to the frame but also uh, drilled holes because I'm going to put bolts in there uh, just to hold it because it is a pretty critical connection right there. So the next step of this is we're going to figure out how to get that motor in here and uh, how it's going to drive a couple of uh, sub sprockets that are part of the mid shaft. Uh, we'll eventually go out and drive the axles. So this will become a powered truck. So here we go. Got the truck flipped upside down so we can work on installing the goodies and it's kind of seeing how everything's going to lay out. So that's kind of the stage I'm in right now. Just sort of mocking everything up. I had to add in a piece right here. This is just a piece of angle iron. Uh, I found that the spring plate here had a pretty good bow in it probably from, uh, you know, 60 years of supporting that uh, box motor car. So I've, I've put this in. Uh, it'll be welded on both sides. Uh, that will keep that from bending anymore. Uh, and then I've got the bearing um, blocks here sort of mocked up. None of this has been welded in yet. Uh, I'm just sort of seeing if this is the best way to lay all these things out. So we'll have our our motor drive sprocket uh, over here and that will drive the mid shaft. Uh, the motor right now is just sort of sitting on some wood blocks, uh, but I did make up a bracket, got it right here. That's gonna be the mount for that motor. Typically I try to use the front uh, face to mount. I like, I like the C-frame motors. Uh, mount them that way rather than relying on the base plate but in this case uh, using the base plate is just going to be super easy to do it that way so I'm going to cheat and just use the base plate to mount the motor and uh, I've got one of my uh, handy dandy cut sprockets on here uh, getting ready to uh, weld that back together I don't have the sprocket for the other wheel yet. That one will go right there. Uh, somehow or another, I screwed up and ordered a uh, inch and a half bore instead of an inch and a quarter. So that kind of set me back a little bit. But that's basically, I think I'm going to lay everything out. So next step is we'll get all this stuff welded in and get our sprocket welded. I'm still waiting for the uh, little sprockets that go on the mid shaft and yeah we're making progress here so we've got our mid shaft brackets here all welded up and i decided to flip the truck over just to work on this motor mount a little bit so you can see here the motor is suspended from this bracket and what i'm going to do is I will weld some tabs here and here uh, that will keep the bracket from twisting whenever uh, we have to tension the chain and I'll put the tensioner pushing up against here and, and over there and I've got my holes drilled in the motor mount here or the motor bracket I should say so I've got the holes drilled uh, so my poor man's way of making slots in things is uh, I will now take a jigsaw and put through the hole and then 
basically saw the the piece out here that's between these two holes so we're going to do that now get those cut out so we have a slotted bracket and then i'll go through and uh, drill the holes in this frame so these are these are 5 16 uh, holes that's the size i need for the jigsaw blade to fit inside the hole but then i'll probably put uh quarter inch bolts so that way i got a little bit of slop because the slots won't be perfect uh, but there really doesn't need to be much strength here uh, this motor is you know hanging down and the tensioners uh, that i put up against this angle iron to tighten the chain uh, will be doing a lot of the the torque work on that so yeah let's get to it we'll slot those out and we'll drill the hole drill and tap the holes into this uh, we'll have our motor mount complete got the motor mount all finished up here so slotted slotted all of our our uh, bolt holes here that hold it in place and then i've added the uh, tensioning devices originally i was thinking i was going to put them over here and then i realized that the springs would be in the way so uh, basically to tighten the chain uh, these are double nutted right here and then this nut is welded to the frame so you loosen these bolts right here and then you turn this with a wrench and you can see how the mount moves uh, and that will of course uh, tension the chain that's going to be in between those sprockets then once it, everything is tensioned then you just retighten uh, all four of those so i think this should work out pretty well uh, it's made for serviceability with these being out here it'll be out in the open easy to get to and i made sure to offset this from these bolts so that way you can get a ratchet on there and loosen and tighten those so yeah this should work out pretty well uh, i you know ended up hanging the motor from the base plate which is not my first choice but it's just so much easier than cutting out the uh, c-frame bracket so we went that route not the first time i've done that so i'm not not scared of it i just like the c-frame better because it's it's very secure so the next step uh, we'll get this truck flipped back over and continue working on the bottom side i'm still waiting for the sprocket to come in and a couple other sprockets but it's getting very close to being done i st still need to put the uh brake cylinder back in and get the brake shoes hung back up but other than that it's it's about done and and ready to go under the car and i cannot wait to try this out okay we're flipped back over again here so we can kind of finish things up i've got the brake cylinder put back in here uh this moves on a on a slide there's a Delrin slide that that's attached to. I've got the uh, brackets here that I got put in place. I just need to weld those down uh, and then we can actually secure the brake shoes. This is, I got one of them in here. So I just, you know, double nut a bolt, leave it kind of loose so it can still move freely. And then uh, we've got our sprockets here kind of roughed into place. I've got to put the uh, dial indicator on here and straighten it out because you know this one's got this one's got a little bit of a wobble in it. So before I weld this sprocket back on here, uh, I'll put the dial indicator on and get it all tapped up to where it's square and not wobbling and then we can cut some chains and get the chains put on and that'll be the end of it got our sprockets all trued up and 
uh, welded up here. Got the chains on there. And we are ready for a run test. Got my ancient old VFD set up here. So let's see what happens. Here we go. Okay, looks good enough for government work. So we're gonna put this uh, on the trailer and haul it out there and get it stuffed under the car, get everything hooked up and see how she works. We have arrived out here at the railway with this box motor truck. I put some paint on it for everyone that uh, Likes the aesthetically pleasing things. Looks a little better. It does look a, a lot nicer with the paint on there. So get this dumped off the trailer. Get it on the track here. And get it into the barn and under the box motor. Okay, so we've got the truck installed up under here. I'm working on making the connections for the wiring and the air for the brakes. Uh, one thing I did notice here is that our springs, this one, this one's almost fully compressed. This one got a little ways to go. So not quite sure what to make of that. Uh, I guess we'll see how it performs on the track. I was kind of hoping that they would be fully compressed. Uh, granted, once I sit in there, that'll add some weight to it, but I don't know if that'll be enough because the ones on the other side are uh, about the same. But uh, yeah, we're just finishing up some connections here and then we'll be able to take it for a ride.
about 10 amps going up the hill with two motors. This is working very well. Nice. So there we have it, first ride in the now dual AC motor powered box motor. Very good performance, did not have any derailments, no issues noted at all with, the, with either truck. So the next step for the box motor is we're going to get the controls integrated so that the controller here is used you know, actually for the control of the car versus the little potentiometer that I have over there that I'm just kind of using for test. And then I have to get the uh, VFD put in an enclosure and the air compressor and everything. So we still got a fair amount of work to do to this car to bring it up to uh, where I want it to be. But having both of the motors installed and operational was the first part and probably the hardest part of all this so yeah onward and upward thanks for watching hope everyone enjoyed this video and uh, one other thing i'm going to point out before i close up here is uh we've got a big tree over here this tree has been on my mind for a while but uh this big guy right here Yesterday, that tree was standing straight up, and now it is listing heavily to one side. It's starting to come up out of the ground. So, yeah, that's going to make a mess. I'm sure that'll be in another video. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you next time.